Now, if you're in the market for a good wireless headset, then this is the video for you. Today, we're looking at these beauties. The Razer Kyra Pro, the Logitech G Astro A30 Lightspeed, the SteelSeries Arctis Nova 7, then we have the Turtle Beach Stealth 700X Gen 2, and finally, the Xbox wireless headset. I will be rating every headset on different topics. Design, comfort, sound, mic quality, glass wearers, controls, connection, battery life and adjustability. But let's just say there is no bad one here. It's just preference and the devil is definitely in the details. The first one we look at is the Turtle Beach Stealth 700X Gen 2. The unboxing experience is rather bare bone. It only comes with a small manual and a USB-C to USB-A cable. It's a very comfortable headset if you have a small head. It's not flexible at all, so I can imagine it being very uncomfortable if you have a slightly above average sized head. The cushions are very pleasant since they're made out of memory foam. They also look great because they feature a leather side and a fabric inner, so you do have the aesthetic but not the sweaty aspect of leather cups. You can pop the cushion off with a little bit of force, which can feel as if you're tearing the headset apart, so I feel like there's definitely room for improvement there. Once they're off though, you can adjust this tiny piece to basically pull the cushion to the side and make room for glasses. Once again, not the best system since it can be really finicky, but cool nonetheless. Now if that actually makes a difference, I'm not so sure. But the frame of my glasses are really thin anyway, and if you rock bigger glasses than me, I can imagine it being a helpful feature. You'd still need to put your glasses on first though. So there isn't any improvement at all when putting on the glasses. Now one of the most important factors for me is the connection. And I feel like the Turtle Beach can definitely improve here too. I've had multiple instances where the sound was getting weird, as if it was auto-tuned incorrectly. Like pitch up, pitch down, on the wrong moments, if you get what I'm saying. To then find out it was due to my side table being in the way. But if there's nothing in between you and the headset, all is good. One major detail here is the fact that the Bluetooth can interfere here too. One time I was playing Fortnite with some friends and the audio kept cutting out, as if the connection was weak. But then later I found out it was trying to connect to my Bluetooth on my PC while I was gaming, because I had not manually turned off Bluetooth. Bluetooth off. Now connecting the headset to another device is really easy, if you know how. Because if Bluetooth is on, it does not mean you can connect to it right away you have to press and hold the Bluetooth button and then hold it until it says pairing mode. Bluetooth on. Pairing Bluetooth. Then and only then will it connect. The manual did not state this, so I was actually about to smash it. Another negative would be that the Bluetooth function is only available after you've turned on the headset. And if you're anywhere near your Xbox, that means it will turn on automatically. This also means that if someone is already gaming, it will connect there first and then you can choose another function. The other buttons are easy to reach and I did not have any issues there. The volume wheels have a good amount of resistance and because of the stops at each volume level, you can really tweak this precisely. Now, as far as adjustability goes, you can move the headband up and down, which kinda has these gears too, which make it easier to adjust equally and holds its position very well. The mic can be extended fully to speak, one tap back to mute, and fully back to turn off completely. And you can hear yourself through the speakers. The padding on the top is also very good, although if you wear it slightly angled, it can still feel a little annoying, since the memory foam is not as prominent on all angles. Really, I must say that these are very comfortable. They have a really snug fit, and they have a good amount of force to keep the headset in its place. The sound is easily recognized as a very deep, cinematic bass-centered sound, without peaking in any other department. Especially if you're watching movie trailers, you can really hear that crazy good bass. I would rate this a 9 out of 10 on the cinematic bass scale. The battery life was actually surprisingly good. Advertised as around 20, I got around 23. But I like to turn up the volume a little bit when playing FPS, so maybe when you're using it for different kinds of games, you might actually get even better usage. So this headset is really nice. 
but should you spend your hard-earned money on it? The second headset we look at today is the Astro A30. And I love the fact that they include a hard case for this headset. It's easily overlooked, but so handy and easy to store in it. In the box, we'll find a USB-C to USB-A cable, a 3.5 millimeter aux cable, the boom mic, and a USB receiver. The headset is very comfortable and also very light. The only big downside is the fact that the top does not really have padding like the others. This almost feels as if it's filled with air instead of foam, maybe even gel-like, and it's not enough, even for its light construction. I would feel this headband after extended use. The ear cups are really great though. They have this magnetic design where you can easily pop them off and clean them, or even replace them. As of right now, they don't have another material ear cup. They only offer replacements on their website, but maybe that's something they will offer in the future. As for the ear cups and how soft they are, they are really soft and feature that memory foam too. I did want to mention that these leather pads get rather sweaty when you have them on for like an hour, while with other leather headsets, I did not have that same experience as much. The Astro A30 is a really flexible headset, so I think it will fit basically everyone. You can also adjust this headset with this friction system, which is not the easiest to adjust, especially when already on your head, but gives the assurance that it will not move when you don't want it to. And once it's in your hands, it's rather easy to adjust, so really no problem here. While we have the headset in our hands, let's take a look at the buttons. The power button is really small, and I would have preferred it to be a little bigger. Right below that we have the Bluetooth button, which is also small, but can be recognized as the one button without a dot in the middle. Then below that, you have this small joystick, which is used for adjusting the game slash voice mix and the volume. And below that, the USB-C port. On the other side, we have a small mute button, which is a switch. And a spot for the boom mic too which you can easily install due to this shape on the end. If you don't install the boom mic though, you will still have access to the onboard mic. I must say that this boom mic is difficult to adjust properly, as it will always move back to its original position. When talking connection, this headset comes with a USB receiver and I've never even once had issues with the connection. So objects don't seem to bother this headset as much and its ability to have a stable connection. Also, with connecting it to different devices, it was a smooth ride. No problems or vague manuals here. Neither did I encounter any problems with my glasses. It was completely silent. Didn't hurt or got annoying over time. Just perfect. What's more to this headset is the fact that it makes a game-like sound with everything. Plug in your boom mic and it will make a sound. Turn it off and it will make a sound. Those are tiny details which don't matter in the grand scheme of things, but really give that unique touch to this one. Now even though this headset is really light and doesn't look all that premium, don't let that fool you. Yes, it can have a little shrill sounding highs, but the bass this thing produces is really top notch. On par with the Turtle Beach, or maybe even better. I wish I could let you hear the difference in sound with all of these, but sadly that's not possible. So you're going to need to trust me on that. The volume is also easily changed with the joystick, since it basically gives plus one for each tap, unlike those volume wheels on the other headsets. I must add though, that sometimes I did not know which side I was pushing when I wanted to adjust it really quick and under stress, but it got better when the muscle memory took over. The fit on this headset is great, but not too strong. You can definitely feel the force of the headset pushing against you, sealing you off from the outside world in terms of sound, but not too much, just the right amount of force. The design of this headset is also top notch. I love the white design here, with the iridescent details on the air cup, which you can also detach and customize with different pieces which you can buy separately. The battery life on this one was really good. Advertised as 28 hours, I easily got around 35. So good, in fact, that I immediately noticed this one was significantly better than the others on that front. If you're too late with charging, you can always switch to the 3.5 millimeter aux cable here and bypass the battery. So this one has been out for a minute. 
the Xbox wireless headset. It's the cheapest of the bunch here today. But once again, don't be too quick to judge. This headset really packs a punch. The unboxing experience is a nice but short one here too, as it only comes with some paperwork, the charging cable USB-C to USB-A and the headset itself. The main feature on this headset is of course the turning ear cups for volume. The left ear cup lets you mix the game slash chat volume and has a stop in the middle, so you can always find a way back to the 50-50 mix which is really helpful and thought out. On the left you can find the on off button, which also doubles as a Bluetooth switch button when holding it, and then the mute button on the small mic. If the mic is muted, the small white LED is turned off. You can always hear yourself through this unit, which is also great. Another awesome and unique feature is the fact that it makes the same sounds as the Xbox itself. It then also acts as the on off button for real, as it turns on the console once the headset is on. Which once again can be annoying and cool at the same time. The headset can be adjusted easily once it's off your head, but not as easy when it's already on your head. When you're adjusting it, you can feel these gears, making it even easier to adjust it equally on both sides. Just like the Turtle Beach, but also holds its position really well. Now the ear cups are interchangeable, but not with a fancy magnetic system, rather just the old fashioned way. The ear cups are really comfortable too. It's a spongy, foam feeling material, which moves back to its original position much faster than the memory foam does, without feeling any less comfortable or soft. I would even say that these are the most plushy ear cups out of the ones we featured so far. The top also features that same material but a stronger variant. I did experience some irritation on top when gaming for long sessions, but after taking a small break, that was all gone. It looks as if it's all around the headband here, but that's just design, as the plushy part stops here. The headset is also really flexible. It means that this headset is also suitable for any sized head. Because the mic is smaller than normal, it won't be in your line of sight which is superior in my opinion. I can still wear my glasses with this headset without any issue. The material doesn't produce sound when rubbing up against the temples. And I feel like the ear cup is so soft, it will not really matter how thick the frames of your glasses are here either. Even though the headset does not come with a USB receiver, the connection is still superb. No connection issues whatsoever, and I did not notice any hiccups on that department. But let's be real, this headset is made by Microsoft. When talking sound, this one has a really good bass, but a dull bass, if that makes sense. When you hear bass on this headset, you can hear it without that much detail. If I were to rate it, I would give it a 6.5 on the cinematic bass scale. The battery life was advertised as 15 hours, and I got around 17, which is better than advertised, but the lowest on today's video. On to the next one. The Razer Kyra Pro. In the box we'll find the headset itself, a braided USB-C to USB-A cable, the boom mic, the manual and some stickers. The first thing I noticed when grabbing this one out of the box was the fact that the cups are so loose on the hinge. A little too loose if you ask me. Every time I grab these, they move all around, causing a lot of stress on the hinges I assume. So I'm worried for its durability. On the left ear cup, we have the mute button, which is a switch here. That makes it easier to operate while on your head, since it's so recognizable. Below that, we have the volume wheel, which has soft stops or gears. It would have benefited from a middle stop here, to make it easier to find that right spot. And then we have the on off button and the aux slot for the boom mic. On the other side, we have the link button, the mixer for chat slash game sound, and the Bluetooth button. You can easily adjust its size in steps and it even tells you on which step it landed on. So you can adjust it on step three, for example, and have that on both sides. On top, it has padding, of course, which is fine, but once again, it could have been a little better. One extra negative here, though, is the fact that you can see the plastic edges when you push in the foam. I can imagine this being a problem for some people, 
depending once again on the size of your head. The more the cups are pushed outwards, the more it exposes the plastic edge. I couldn't help but notice the cracking noises the build produces. It doesn't feel cheap when you hold it, but then if you move it around, you can clearly hear that type of sound a really cheap headset would make. The boom mic doesn't look aesthetic at all, and I think it even looks kind of weird. Now what does that ear cup material remind you of? That's right, the SteelSeries Arctis. And it kind of feels like that too, but not exactly the same. It felt like it was a cheaper feeling version. These also produce a lot of sound when rubbing up against your glasses. You can also pop these off if you wish, for cleaning or replacing. The sound of this headset is really balanced. There's no high highs or low lows, but everything just comes together as one, which is really a good aspect. Now you can tweak these yourself too, even on Xbox, but for now, I'll focus on the out of the box experience, so to say. That also means there is no cinematic bass experience. There is of course a good bass, but nothing too special here. Like I said, it kind of melts together with the other sound produced. Now as far as design goes, that green only goes with a very niche gaming setup. And I would not use that in any other scenario other than gaming. The green is just too specific, not subtle. Now on the side it has this glowing Razer logo, which looks really cool. I've read amazing things about the battery life on this thing. But from my testing, it got around 24 hours with the chroma lights on, which is still very good. Last but not least, the SteelSeries Arctis Nova 7X. Are they any good? This has got to be the lightest feeling headset of all. And at 325 gram, it might be too. Even the Astros A30s don't top that with their 345 grams. In the box, we find a do-it-yourself figure, probably their mascot. The headset itself, the USB-C dongle, which I thought would have been connected like this, but more on that later. A female USB-C to male USB-A, a 3.5mm a aux cable, and a regular USB-C to USB-A cable for charging. This one has the perfect fit. It has no padding at the top because it features this elastic headband, which is even better. I've never felt any pains or irritation from long gaming sessions with these, and you can adjust the headband in size, but also the headset itself using that friction design we've seen before. On the left ear cup, we have the volume button, which has no friction, gears or stops at all. It's a loose wheel, and I found myself constantly changing the volume wheels which was annoying to say the least. On this side, there is also a mute button and the aux output, and of course, the retractable mic itself. On the other side, there is that chat slash game mix volume wheel, which is also without any stops, gears or resistance. The power button and the Bluetooth button. Now I love the fact that the mic has a red LED when you press the mute button. The retractable mic is a little annoying because of the fact that it rolls up, I noticed it will curl upwards. So you basically have to readjust it every time you take the mic out. The SteelSeries plate on the side can also be exchanged with a custom one. It has these magnets exactly like the A30s. The ear cups are removable the old fashioned way and it features that memory foam once again. Which is really comfortable. If you want a headset which you almost forget is there to begin with, this one is definitely for you. I've never had any pains or annoyances with this one. This headset is also very flexible, probably one of the most flexible out there. Really impressed with the materials too. With that metal top and just the overall build quality, it holds up really well. Also very comfortable with glasses. Although the temples do make a noise now and then when rubbing up against the material on the cup, but that's just the fabric. You can also replace these with original leather pads if you so wish, which are $15. You can also hear yourself through the speakers, and I did not experience any delays on that front. The connection was perfect, no hiccups at all, but one minor complaint would be on the dongle. I thought it would connect to your controller because it had that USB-C connection and look the part. But that was just my initial thinking. Not sure if that's even possible at all. 
Anyway, turns out you have to put it in this USB-C adapter cable and then hook that up to your Xbox. Then you even got to switch the dongle to Xbox mode and then you're all set. So that's really a downside for me. The battery life was quite good. Not as good as advertised though. They promised 38 hours of battery life, but that's only with a best case scenario when the volume is relatively low. In real life, it's much closer to 20 hours. If you run out of juice in the middle of a gaming session though, you can always switch to the aux cable and bypass the battery. When talking sound quality, this one is relatively balanced. The bass is good, but not as good as the A30s or the Turtle Beach. I actually like listening to music on this one too, since it has that perfect balanced sound for that and the design to back it up. I only upload unfiltered, straight to the point, no bullshit videos. Tech content, cool products, gadgets you didn't know about, reviews, comparisons, and much more. So what's up? I'm Raoul, which is the French version of the Spanish Raoul, and I'm from the Netherlands, a small country in Europe. I'm 27 years old and I love tech, gadgets and innovation. You can always put the headset like this if you want to have it off your ears for a second, but if the ear cups turn, this is an easier way of doing it. So that puts the Xbox wireless headset at a disadvantage. So with all of that out of the way, here's a quick overview. Thank you so much for watching. My favorite of the bunch would be the Xbox wireless headset. Its pricing is just unbeatable. The sound is very good and it's easy to recommend. If I were to use it as a on the go headset as well, I would definitely go for the A30s, which I really like as well. I hope you got some value out of this video. And if you made it to the end, comment, I made it. And I'll be sure to react to all